Mark Raymondi for ESPN back with you today with PFL featherweight star Chris Wade, who also happens to be a New York Mets Giants Knicks fan like I am. So obviously someone who knows adversity, he's battled that throughout his uh, his MMA career, done very well for himself. Playoffs coming up in the PFL, you're the number one seed, Chris. I know that you went to the finals, of course, last year, losing to uh, Movlik Kaibalayev. Uh, you, you're the favorite to to, to kind of go all the way this year in PFL. Finally, this is I think your what your third year in PFL, not including this, the uh, the pandemic. This is the fourth season fourth that season. I'm with wow. PFL. Okay, yeah. Dang. So it was, uh, yeah. 2018 was a tough split decision right. loss in the semis where I thought I had it. 2019, a little upset. You know, that was the two fight in one night days, and then last year we were just short. So. Um, but you know, we're digging to improve. I'm working hard all the time. And I think that I'm a better fighter than I've ever been. So, um, I'm looking forward to the, these next two bouts big time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you had a really uh, great regular season coming up that win over Kyle Botchniak, that first round finished nine points, um, in the featherweight standings and the first round opponent is, uh, Brendan Lochnane, right. Next, uh, next month, August 20th in London, right? Yeah. Um, he's going to be the first one up. First man up, first man down. Um, we we were on the 13th until like yesterday or the day before, and then things got switched up. You know, they're looking to pull him even closer to his like uh, hometown, I think. <laughs> so they've been flip-flopping things a little bit. You know, he's getting, the, he's getting a little of the spoon-fed treatment, but uh, he's going to get a dose of reality soon. Does that bother you at all? Because you are, you are the higher seed and, you know, you're the, you're the more tenured PFL fighter. Yeah, I mean, it does bother me uh, to an extent because they are going to be in New York right before that. So it's like there is an opportunity there being your number one seed, having the most points, having a uh, most exciting finish uh, um, in in the uh, division. And uh, I felt like there was definitely opportunity there to do something with me as well. And uh, that was overlooked for one reason or another to to go in his direction and uh you know as a fighter you 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 have to take some of that to uh you know personally take it to heart and uh you have to let it become a, a motivating factor so that's what i'm doing with it right now it, it feels like to me and, and correct me if i'm wrong here but you know you, you had to run the ufc and, and you've lo you lost the really tough guys is la makachev being uh, your last loss in the ufc but it feels like you kind of come into your own in pfl i think you're 34 years old now but it feels very much like you're in your prime uh you know just well-rounded wise do you feel that way yeah absolutely um when i fought islam and i was up at lightweight um you know we had we had a real back and forth the 29 28 uh fight where we were giving each other everything we could handle from a grappling standpoint but I've become and I'm not he has as well he's developed as well but I've become much more well-rounded fighter when I was competing at that time I was basically like a glorified wrestler um looking for some a little bit of catch wrestling some subs and uh now I feel like you know if you look at the mat that just the the track record there, there's nobody that's been able to beat me who keeps the fight on their feet with me. Everybody who's won a fight against me is pretty much from Dagestan, and they get a takedown, they hold a body lock, and they squeeze for dear life with their coaches screaming on the other side of things to hold on, not let me back to my feet. And, uh, I mean, I've just been working like hell to not let anything like that even occur. Again, my cage wrestling uh ryan lafleur and i we've been doubling down on that and um i feel like i'm in a position now where i get to dictate where the fight takes place it's funny you said that because i think uh the dagestan thing i mean because i think the only guy you've only you've lost to that hasn't been from from dagestan or, or, or that area was uh, schulte right natan schulte everyone yeah. else uh, everyone else on in the l column for you has been has been a uh a dagestani or, or chechenian i think right yeah, I think it's all Dagestanis. Like the first bout, Schult, I mean, I totally slept on the dude. I, I had no idea who he was. I thought I was just yeah. going to run through him. That was my first fight coming out of the UFC. And I slept on him and he beat me. He beat me solid. His pressure was great. And uh, But the second bout, I, I got his ass back. I never lit somebody up like that with that many strikes. And it just like the judging was uh, 
one of those mind bogglers. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's been the Dagestani guys that can, uh, that can hang with the grueling pace of the fights that I, that I get into and, and they can squeeze and they don't gas out and they're, they're a tough go. And, um, but you know, I, I still look forward to even competing against them, uh, whenever I get the chance to, because, uh, I'm always looking to right those wrongs too. Well, there are no Dagestanis in the current playoff field in PFL, right? It's you, it's Brendan Lochnay and it's Bubba Jenkins. And I think it's, uh, R- Ryoji, right. From, uh, from, yeah. Japan. Yeah. Kudo. Yep. 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 I'm not yeah. sad about it this year. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba is, of course, a wrestler. Uh, I, I heard you, you guys are not not really uh, good friends, you and Bubba Jenkins, from what I've heard. No, we've uh, <laughs> we have like serious bad blood in this division with wow. the three of us. Uh, it's kind of like Brendan and Bubba versus me. They've they've <laughs> formed some sort of like weak alliance uh against me what is this survivor (laughs) what's going on yeah yeah i don't know what the hell they're doing i was trying to manipulate it honestly just to be vindictive where i was going to make them fight each other in the semis but (laughs) because i was the last bout but i saw the math of it and there was no way for me to make them fight each other it was either i win and fight bubba or i win and fight brandon so i was like damn well i just got to do what i got to do but i wanted where does where does that uh bad blood stem from uh you know they they just um a little bit of jealousy i think you know obviously bubba and i fought competed against each other he's salty because i because i just dominated him and he thought the other that it was going to go the other way so uh he's got a huge mouth and i don't do well with people that have big mouths and brendan started chirping and and joining him and talking this season uh, it actually started after the finals last year i never had a, any issue with the guy but he started to like um at me on twitter right after the bout about he, how he was the real finalist and uh just trying to on my performance kind of um and this is brendan uh, or bubba brendan brendan, brendan. Wow. Okay. and uh so he jumped in immediately and I get it because I've been uh, before I've been the loser in the semis and been sitting on the sideline. So he was trying to promote himself, talk him, talk himself up. Since then, I, I lost respect for him. He's caught trying to call me a juice head, a cheater. I take I've, I'm a veteran in this sport and I've called for uh, like when USADA came through. I was like one of the happiest people in the organization at the time. Um, I think having a clean sport is one of the most crucial things that we can do. So when he started down that road, I lost all my respect for the guy. And I just basically put a little note in my head that he needs to be hurt severely when it's when my time comes with him. So this is this is a real grudge match that you're going into next month. Yeah, he doesn't like me and I can't stand him. And like, this is, we really want to hurt each other. I really want to do harm to him and he wants to do harm to me. This is, a, this is like as real as it gets, you know, this is like, this, this is, uh, you know, like Tito Chuck stuff where they just, <laughs> they, they don't like each other. So who's Tito and who's Chuck in this case? <laughs> Damn, I, well, who was, uh, <laughs> I don't even remember those matches, how they went. So um, it's been so long. Chuck um, won uh, Chuck won the first two in the in the UFC. And then uh, Tito won like four years ago on. on the, yeah. Uh, weekend, like that horrible fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is, um, pr- from what I understand, there's some other things going on also behind the scenes going into the playoffs, too, with uh, with you and PFL. Can you can you elaborate at, at all on that stuff? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm not here to disparage my league and organization at all I, I i love the pfl's format um and i'm grateful you know to uh to have a place to call home and to compete but um i also am not someone who thinks that you should advance into a playoff format of uh any sport and and run deep into it and go backwards in pay and uh Unfortunately, like the last few years, the situation is as I, my competition increases and I go move into the four man playoff instead of the eight man that it used to be, which is harder to do, in my opinion. Um, the pay has been reduced each year um, pretty significantly. Um, 
and you know as a family man as a as a homeowner as somebody with with a child i just um am not okay with going backwards from let's say the botchniak fight on june 24th to going to england and to have to swallow after the season i've had taking a substantial pay cut um what what would that what would that cut be how much did you make for uh for the botchniak fight and how much will you make against lockman I mean, I really would rather not go like exact specifics on it, um, but it's it's uh, it would be a for me a su- substantial uh, cut down in in what I normally take in, and uh, I Can never say like, like by how much it would be, how much less. I mean, we're talking about like a a thirty percent chunk or, wow. or or something like that. Um, why why I, why is that? that? Did that happen in previous seasons as well? No, the first year was absolutely amazing. I was like, this is just, this is uh, awesome. Couldn't believe it. And then like in the second year, there was a little confusion. I didn't see that th- some of the things had changed and it went down a little bit, but it was still pretty solid. Like it was a solid night and I, I had nothing to complain about. Then it went down again, another chunk and then coming off COVID and now it's stayed there. It hasn't gone anywhere. and um. And it's just, it's like, it's not sustainable for us as a lot of us as fighters. Cause, cause you have to, as a fighter, you have to look at what's worst case scenario, right? Like God forbid fight doesn't go your way. You go over to, to a different country, you pay taxes, paying $1,200 a pop for, for cornermen to fly over, uh, for hotel rooms. And then you could come home after paying everybody and paying your taxes with, with, not not very much you know um they, they wouldn't pay for that stuff like uh cornerman accommodations and then their flights i mean it doesn't it, in the past it's like for at least my arrangement it's been one out of my three guys wow. so if i'm the main event like i don't know what are they gonna do maybe add one more make it two mm-hmm. still paying thousands of dollars out of pocket um and it's not like i just i'm performing you know like the I was cut like not a lot of people know that but I had like I I had a clause in my contract that if I make the semifinals I was guaranteed to come back no matter what but coming into the they canceled the the season due to COVID Mm. and there was a pandemic clause in the contract in very fine writing and it said like acts of God nature whatever Mm. and they were they were able to use it as an act of God and to basically reset my pay scale so i had worked through a whole contract for two years and i was due to get a new one and instead i got cut and reset back to the start Mm -hmm. and i've been working through basically my original like 2018 contract all over again for these last two years and uh last year i was pretty quiet about it i bet on myself and i was trying to just run the table and um and then this year, um, seeing that I'm now I'm facing the same problem again, and I saw last year how bad it hurt me to not have been taken care of uh, in that regard uh, got in the playoffs, the, the two bouts in the playoffs. So I tried to just quietly speak about it again to my people, and it you know, doesn't seem to be being received in any way. Uh, that they take serious. So what is like, does the contract indicate that you would actually get a pay cut if you made the playoffs? Cause that seems like it would be like, uh, there's just, a, there's just so your regular season bouts are like win show style, like, right. like uh, any other organization, right. but they have like a flat rate for supposed flat rate for the playoff rounds, which has been reduced each season up until the last season. And, but then so every, everyone gets that flat rate. That's the problem that I'm not okay with is that not everybody gets that it because there's different people in this different names in, in the organization that, you know, there's, there's no way in hell they're fighting for that amount. It just is, it's, trust me, it's not possible. Yeah. And uh, I don't think my opponent's one of them. And I have an issue with that because the dude's in fourth He's been dragged through this thing to barely get him into the playoffs. He's got minus 1,200 favorite each 
each round. And, uh, you know, I'm fighting Lance. I'm fighting Kyle, who's never been finished. You know, I'm not getting the road he's getting. And he's also being, you know, who, who the hell is he at the end of the day? The guy who, like, what, you were a UFC, you lost the, or you won a decision in a UFC contender bout once? You know, I'm, I was five and two as a lightweight there. Uh, it, I just don't understand what his pull draw, it's, uh, it's baffling. Is, it, is there any way to go to PFL and try to restructure things before the fight, before the playoffs? Yeah, all I was hoping for was just to um, not go backwards. I just wasn't – I just didn't want to go backwards as I advanced. I didn't think that – I don't think anybody that you speak to, like, fairly would say that that makes sense, you know, that you should advance and go in reverse. Um, unless the, unless the fight was shorter, if it was like a two round, like some sort of weird situation, oh, it's a two round bout. Okay. I get it. Like we're not, we don't have to compete as long, but, uh, I still have to, I have to fly overseas. I have to make weight. I have to bring my, my corner man. It's just, um, not something where you want to go in reverse. And, uh, I'm hoping, you know, my manager and them that they see the merit of like uh, that, that I'm putting a lot of effort uh, forth to finish fights and to be exciting and to promote fights and to be um, a part, a big part of this, this league. And that I'm just asking for just to be fair, not, I'm not asking like, Hey, I want, I want this and I want to double up. I'm the man. I just don't want to go backwards. That's, that's it. Just for my family and my house and my, you know, my bills, things like that. So are, are there discussions ongoing with your manager, who is Ali Abdelaziz of, of Dominance MMA? I mean, yeah, he and I have been talking quite a bit, but uh, and I he, haven't. And he's talking with PFL, presumably? Yeah, I, I would. I think so, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's just uh, one of those situations, like I said to you, where I tried the complete quiet approach last year. Mm -hmm. He went down to the wire last year with the contract where I basically was told that I was going to be replaced um if i didn't ex yeah i was told i was going to be replaced if i didn't accept the reduction um and take it and uh they just said that they would use the substitute and like like it was nothing not a problem and then now this year it's happening again and like you know right is right and wrong is wrong and i'm you can only take so much as a as a a, a homeowner like i said as a family man um, the need to look out for me and mine as well. Of course. How, how long does your contract with PFL run through? Well, my contract is up this year. I fought through all my regular season bouts. I went 4-0. and I had two knockouts. Um, and then the only remaining technical part right now is these last two playoff bouts, the semifinal bout and the final bout. Um, and that's the only sticking point, like I've said, I agreed to uh, uh, what I got reset to in the regular season because my back was against the wall. I had no choices. It was that or walk away from everything. And uh, so I accept that. That's that. I never said a word about regular season stuff, but uh, I just I don't think any human being would want to find themselves advancing and going backwards by significant percentages um that's just that's just common sense what would be like your your ideal outcome to the situation like the solution um just to find some type of middle ground and them to acknowledge that i've been doing what they've asked of me that you know the issue wasn't that i wasn't winning at 55 it was that i wasn't finishing enough fights which it isn't supposed to be uh such a big thing and this is supposed to be like a merit win in advance situation but you know it wasn't and uh most promotions want to see finishes and flashy stuff so you know i cut an extra weight and now i'm putting people away and i just want you know how i don't see how you can have it both ways like that if they if you if a fighter underperforms your contract doesn't protect you they rip it up into a million pieces and they tell you to get lost but if you overperform it, they tell you, ha, look at this. You're you're screwed. And um, that I just it's it's like it's tough to take big cuts.
For sure. And, and uh, I mean, does this affect your, your preparation at all? Cause I'm sure that's kind of weighing on you a little bit. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's been something that's not a necessary uh, distraction, in my opinion. It could be easily resolved just by them meet, ha- finding some middle ground with me. Because like I said to you, I promise you, I'm not asking for the world. I'm o- literally only asking to like to just basically match what the last bout was, at least. If not, just like a little tiny bump up like you would get on a normal contract, which is completely reasonable. But it's like... Uh, it doesn't seem to be a priority right now. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people realize that fighters, some fighters in PFL actually take a pay cut when they go to the playoffs. That kind of seems contradictory to what, you know, because the, the, the stakes are increasing. You would imagine that the, 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 you know, the rate would be increasing as well for, for pay. Right. I mean, and, and like I said to you, in the first two years, it, it certainly was. I mean, it was right. like, it was awesome. I was like, this is, these people really have it like perfect this is a fighter's league right and it was a great i had no complaints and then um it's just you know inflation's going up it's ripping through the ceiling everything costs more how do you you know i'm i'm reading articles that say uh this off season that they've gotten an increase influx in millions of dollars in investment uh funding how is it possible the, that the playoff format's been cut in half and the funds aren't there to at least match what the person is making uh, during the regular season. Um, it's certainly there. They just don't want to give it to the, the athletes. When, uh, when the season is up, you know, when the playoffs are up in the finals, would you like to return to PFL? It seems like, you know, you've at least enjoyed the competition and, and the, the format of the PFL. Do you want to come back? Yeah, I like gen. I genuinely like. I was just talking to uh, Ali about this, um, and I genuinely. There are so many people that work within this organization that I've become so close with that are just amazing people, and I can't see myself wanting to be a part of anything else because like, I truly believe in what they're building, and I want them to just become more and more successful. <laughs> I genuinely do. I want the league to take off. I want them to compete with anyone that's at the top and uh, ratings wise um, from uh, gate attendance. It would be really cool to be one of the first people in the inaugural seasons and then to look back 15 years or so from now and to see a full arena like a like an MSG filled for a PFL event that that would really make me happy i just uh i just want what's fair that's really all i'm not someone asking for the world i'm not i'm not like that i realize that i don't have like a million instagram followers and i know where money unfortunately translates in the, in this that it's entertainment but i also i am knocking people out i am selling fights and i am doing what they ask of me so i i just would would like to be able to take care of my family a little better yeah, see, it seems like a fair request. Uh, Chris, I will let you run. Thank you so much again. Hopefully everything gets resolved. You have the fight August 20th, London, Brendan Lockney, and you're the number one seed. And then if you win that one, you go on to, of course, the PFL finals later on this year. Could win a million in that fight, but I know there's uh, you know stuff that you want to get resolved first. Really appreciate it, man. Good luck with everything over the next few weeks. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.